All right, everybody, welcome to the New Testament book study in the book of Hebrews, a New Testament uh, elective, um, a book study. And I hope you're excited as I am to be looking at this fairly enigmatic book in the New Testament, one of the books that um, maybe is uh, talked about very little, uh, read very little, but there are some very interesting passages in here and a great look at what early, the earliest followers of Jesus would have thought about him. So, um, so as we move along, just want to talk a little bit about the syllabus and what is going to be required of you and what the course is going to be like. So here we are again. Uh, this is NT567, um, New Testament Book Study in Hebrews, and my name is Craig Hill. And here we go. Um, if you want to get in contact with me or you have a question about the course, um, there are a few ways in which you can do that. The first way is if you have a question about an assignment or something about the course, the best place to ask that question is in the assignments and question forum on Moodle. It is in the general information. It's not associated with any of the particular weeks of the course. It's at the very beginning on the Moodle page, at the very top. And so if you have a question about an assignment, there's a good chance that someone else might have that question. So if you ask that question in that forum, then that will give me an opportunity to answer that question in the forum and that other people will be able to see that answer. If you have a more specific question that relates to you only, um, you might email me at my email address, my fuller.edu email address, which you can see right there, Craig underscore Hill. Um, if you feel like you would like to have a phone conversation, um, that is very possible. My phone number, my mobile number is there. The one thing I do ask is that if you um, please text me or email me to set up a time for a call time because I want to make sure that I um, give you enough time um, and attention and calling at the right time and setting up a call time would be helpful for that. And of course, I'm always um, open to meeting on Skype or Google Chat um, and we'll do a little bit of video conferencing this quarter. So that will be one way of getting in touch with me. So that's contact information. In terms of what we're going to be doing, needing to do for the course, there are a few things that um, you'll be doing. Um, for one, there's going to be required reading, and you're going to report on that required reading. So every week there's going to be a, either a PDF that you'll download and read, or there will be a, um, a Prezi like this one, a Prezi voiceover micro lecture of some kind, that usually is not going to be more than 10 or 15 minutes long. Um, that will have to do with Hebrews. So that's one thing that you're going to be doing every week that you'll be checking off and reporting on the reading. The other thing that you're going to be doing um, is, um, in terms of the required reading for the course, um, I have given you a couple of, I've recommend or I've required that you um, have available either for purchase or that you have available two out of the three required commentaries on Hebrews. One is um, Garrett Cockerell in the um, NICNT series. This is a new one. Um, or Craig Kester's commentary, Hebrews commentary from the Anchor Bible series. Or Peter O'Brien's commentary in the New Pillar series. And so these are all fairly new commentaries. I ask you to have two of the three available. And when you report on the reading, um, you will be choosing the two of the three that you're going to be doing. So hopefully you've already bought those, you've already purchased those, um, you have them available. Um, I'm looking at them right now on my shelf. I can't wait to crack them open and, and take a look. All right. The other um, text that I want you to have available is um, the Epistle to the Hebrews and Christian Theology. And that is edited, um, among other people, by Richard Bauckham. And I'm going to re be referring to that volume as Bauckham. And in the syllabus, you'll notice that I've referred to re the page numbers in Bauckham, but then in parentheses, I might have put the actual author of the chapter or the author of the article in there. So it is a compiled volume, um, edited uh, and compiled these papers from this conference on uh, Hebrews and theology. And so um, Bauckham is how we're going to refer to that. So every week you're going to have some reading in the commentaries, some reading in Bauckham. You'll definitely be reading the passage in Hebrews for the week. Um, and then one thing... Uh, You'll also, like I said, I think it's going to be about four times in the quarter. You are going to be doing an honor reading report where it'll be like a quiz in which you'll it'll say, I have read for Hebrews 1, chapters 1 and 2. I've 
um, I've consulted two of the three commentaries, and you'll write true. And that will then be the way that you'll reply or that you'll report your reading uh, to me. And it's an honor system, but um, it's 10% of the grade, and that's that's that. Um, one of the things I do also want to recommend um, in terms of the required reading um, or having something available is you are going to be doing a lot of interpretive work within Hebrews. And um, if you have some Bible software, that's going to be very helpful. I would recommend, if you don't have any Bible software, um, I know at, at, at Fuller, BibleWorks is the, is the system that they are using. Um, I have that. I also have a system that I use called Accordance. Um, and then um, if you don't have that, because the outlay of money can be fairly significant for Bible software, if you've not yet made that investment, um, let me just encourage you to, um, to create an account at greattreasures.org. For the New Testament, it's probably the best online Bible software that I have found. Um, it does not replace Bible software because the, um, uh, the resources, I'll talk a little bit about it and give you a little presentation on it, but greattreasures.org will be a, a very good, helpful resource if you've not yet purchased Bible software. Um, and so we'll talk more about that going forward. All right. Moving on, um, the other thing that you're going to be doing in the course is you're, um, every week there is going to be um, interpretive exercises in the book of Hebrews and the section of, the, of Hebrews that we're in, as well as some group engagements in which you're going to be making some observations from passages as a group within a wiki. So um, you're going to be looking at each week a theme or a text from Hebrews. You're going to work as an individual on that. Um, when you do turn in an interpretive exercise on Hebrews, um, these are these are 500 words max, so I want you to do a lot of work outside and then write these things up in a very condensed, condensed, um, uh, dense uh, 500 words in which you engage this. But I, I don't want it to be lengthy, but I do want you to engage in a, in a meaningful way. Your group engagements are going to be, you're going to be put into groups, and on Moodle they have these things. We used to, I used to do these on Google Docs, now we're doing it on a Moodle wiki. Um, and you'll be put into groups, and then you'll make some observations on a passage together as a group, and you'll engage with each other um, throughout the week. So every week, there will either be an interpretive exercise that you'll do as an individual, or a group engagement that you and your group will work on online together, and all the instructions will be available on Moodle. All right, let's move forward. Another thing that we're going to be doing this quarter, and this is one of the first times I've done it, is you're going to be doing a reflection journal um, and some video conferencing with me. So, for four of the different, uh, four of the ten weeks in the quarter, you're going to write and engage with a reflection question that I'm going to provide for you. Um, two of those weeks, you'll be writing in a journal. Um, the other two weeks, I want to give an option of meeting together with me and some other classmates by way of a video conference. This has been something that we found to be very helpful with online instruction that at various points along the way that we can connect together face to face as it were through video conferencing and what I will do is I will post a number of times available through the week and hopefully one of those will work for you. If they don't work for you or you'd rather not do the video conference, it is optional. Um, that uh, you can, I'll give you another reflection assignment that you can fill in for that. But the video conference, I hope, will be a very good option for all of us um, to connect with each other. As we move on down the road, uh, there will also be weekly discussion forums. So every week there will be an online forum. It'll be on Moodle. Um, and there will be a discussion of issues from either the interpretive exercises that you've done as an individual or your group engagement or the reading, and there will be a specific question that you will, uh, I'll put out to the entire class, you will write an original post of 300 words max, um, and then you'll respond to at least two other of those posts. Okay, So those are the weekly discussion forums, and if you've done any online <coughs> um, uh, courses here at Foley, you've probably done a little bit of those discussion forums. All right, continuing on. The final project or the final paper that we're going to be doing in the course is a 2,500 to 3,000 word final research or exegetical paper. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to take a significant passage, uh, a passage being anywhere from 10 to 20 verses in Hebrews, 
and um, or to take a prominent theme in the book of Hebrews and um, and trace that theme through Hebrews. So either exegeting a text in Hebrews or talking about a theme in Hebrews and working through that entire theme. So something like the theme of faith in Hebrews or the theme of promises in Hebrews or the theme of high priest in Hebrews, something like that. Or you could take a significant text, like maybe you're interested in atonement in Hebrews and you might take Hebrews 9, 11 to 22 and, um, and break that passage down um, like a commentary, if you will. So you, and, and I'll give you some various texts that, that might work for that. Um, with this paper, what I want you to be doing is you obviously have been engaged with your the two commentaries that you've been using. I want you to expand your commentary base, and I also want you to expand into journal articles and other things and do some, some research to engage in actually some theological, some biblical research and get your feet wet if you've not already done that in your seminary program. Um, but to talk about, especially in the online form, like how how would you go about doing that research if you have access to a theological library like Fuller, or if you're um, or if you're in the boondocks somewhere, you don't know where where am I going to get this stuff? How do I do this online? So that's what we're doing. But ultimately, in this paper, I, I want to hear you offer this a coherent interpretation of a theme or a text and talk about why the author of Hebrews put that in there. All right, moving on, a couple things to pay attention to, some policies about the class. Um, when we talk about attendance in the class, obviously it's an online class. It's an asynchronous class, which means that there's never a time where we as an entire class meet together. However, your attendance is marked by your turning in of assignments on various points of time throughout the week. And the two dates, the two times, that I have put forth as the most significant times is there's gonna there's always going to be a due date um, on Wednesday at 11:59 or midnight. So Wednesday, the end of day, is a deadline, and Sunday, end of day, is a deadline as well. And what we'll typically do is that the first part of the week you'll be engaging with a text from the Book of Hebrews, and you'll be doing that on your own. You may be comparing with a commentary or something like that. Um, and there will be an exercise that you'll have to do, that, and it'll be due on Wednesday. And then there will be readings and posting in a, uh, in a forum, and all of that will be due on Sunday. So um, I don't want you to wait till the deadlines to, to get them done. It would be great to get them done a little bit early so that other people can see your posts and, and do that. But that's how attendance is going to be marked in here. Um, if you do submit work in the course, um, which you will, um, I want you to submit it as a um, Microsoft Word dot docx document. Now, um, if it's if it's just a dot doc document, that's fine. We can do that. Um, late submissions, just so you know, um, if you do turn something in late, um, there is no necessary um, promise that there will be comments on it. I obviously will grade it, um, but there will be no comments on it. If it's um, if it's um, quite late, then there will be penalties. Um, on that assignment. Uh, the last day to turn in any work of the quarter is Friday of five p at 5 p.m. of finals week, and you can look at the syllabus to see when that is. Um, and also, just about my own policies, my own grading, is that um, when we talk about a baseline, a turn, you turned in a good paper, you've, done, you've looked at the assignment, you've looked at what it, it requires, and you've done the required assignment, then that essentially deserves an 85. That's a B. That's good. That's good work is the baseline. Um, if moving then to very good, like a B plus, or moving into superior work, like an A minus, or moving into outstanding work, like an A, um, would be uh, moving up from that baseline. So that's what we're looking for. But if you're getting 85s on your assignments and the it, and the comments are um, this is good work. It's saying, look, you're completing the assignment, um, and that's that's wonderful. Uh, that's great, or that's good, I should say. Um, but moving then beyond that um, takes extra work. Now, if if there are certain things in the assignment that you do not do, then it's from an 85 that I would start moving down in the grading. So if you don't if you don't do something I asked you to do, um, you might get um, uh, something like a um, uh, like a below average or even a borderline grade 
um, or there might even be a failing grade if you have not done the assignment in good faith. All right, so that's a little bit about my grading, um, just to be aware of that sort of stuff. So every week you're going to have something you're going to you're going to look on Moodle, and I've done my best. My brain works best if I can see everything on the week uh, right in front of me. Um, I don't like to, to have something clicked off, especially online. I feel like if there's something that I have to click on and a pathway to get to something, um, it's almost like it doesn't exist and it's hard to get to. So I try to keep as much as I can on that front page um, week by week. I would just encourage you week by week to close all the other weeks and just have the one week open that you're going to be working on. But you can see everything you need to do for that week. And there will every week be some kind of a, a weekly introduction video in which I basically say, hey, how are you doing? This is what we're going to be doing this week. Um, there will probably also be, well, there will be an, a lecture, either a PDF or a Prezi like this one with a voiceover. Um, there will be a text of Hebrews that we're going to be working out of and that you're going to be um, required to read and to do some uh, a close reading of and to do some analysis of. There will also be an individual interpretive exercise in Hebrews that you'll work on, or you'll work on a group engagement for that week. Um, each week we'll have one or the other, and um, that'll be clear on the Moodle page. There will also be reading for every week, like I've said, the two of the three commentaries that you need to read, as well as various articles in Bauckham. There will also be, late in the week, a discussion forum in which we start to debrief some of the issues that we've been talking about in the reading and in the text of Hebrews. <coughs> Every week, um, I'm going to expect you to interact with each other, to do it fairly, um, and also to do some interaction with me as well. So um, i I'm very excited about this, um, this course and just thinking about... Um, the goal of what we're trying to do here. Um, we are trying to know and interpret Hebrews, um, the book of Hebrews, this, this wonderful, enigmatic, strange book in the New Testament. Um, and as we do that, a couple things we want to keep in mind is we're aiming for you to develop proficiency in both an academic setting, so to be able to go to an academic conference and engage in discussion about this particular book, or to, um, if you have an idea for a paper or for the research in Hebrews, that would be the idea of um, academic proficiency in the book of Hebrews, but also pro for proficiency in ministry settings, that you're going to be taking a text like Hebrews and maybe standing in the pulpit and, br and giving that text to your uh, congregation, or you might be leading a Bible study in um, or you might be doing other work, writing, devotional, wh whatever it is, but this is about understanding the book of Hebrews to engage in ministry settings as well. And then one a final thing that um, I, what I want to do, what I want you all to do, is I want you to, through this course, all these assignments that we're doing, I want you to be, begin to create for yourself a reusable resource so that if you are... Um, Later in your ministry career, if you're going to be preaching through Hebrews or you're going to be doing work in Hebrews, that you could go back to this material and you could see the work you've done on it, work that you've seen I've done on it, um, and create a resource for yourself. Um, not just get your four units, but to create a resource that's going to serve you in your ministry and academic career going forward. So that's what we're aiming at. That's what we'd like to do. That is what... Whoa, there we go. Um, that is what this pathway for this book or this uh, uh, this New Testament book study in Hebrews is all about. So looking forward to seeing your work and, um, and uh, yeah, hope this was very helpful. If you have questions, feel free to post in the assignments and questions forum on Moodle.